the Lexus NX slots in between the UX and the RX in terms of size. And here for 2024, we're not seeing too many big updates since the big refresh was back in 2022. As always, we're going to go through this thing from the outside in, talk about what it has been like to live with. Let's go ahead, take a look. For the powertrain here, there's an NX250 and a 350. Those are going to be fully gas powered. There's the 350H, which we have here, which is your hybrid electric. And then there's a 450H Plus, which is going to be your plug-in hybrid. This one, the 350H, has a 2.5 liter engine. That is your internal combustion engine. That will help power the front wheels. Then you have three electric motors. You're gonna have one that's gonna help get the internal combustion engine started, as well as help power that battery. And then you're gonna have one electric motor controlling each of the axles, one for the front and one for the back. Now I did try to get specific power numbers for each of those, but those numbers were not available, unfortunately. But the system combined makes 240 horsepower and all wheel drive is the only drivetrain available for the 350H. And we're gonna be mated to a CVT, a continuously variable transmission. From the side here, you can really get a good idea of the sort of the size and the shape. It slots in between the UX and the RX, and it has about the same kind of egg shape going on to it. It's about 183 inches long, which is a little bit shorter than the RDX, which is probably going to be your main competition, the Acura RDX. So it does get, it is a little bit smaller on the inside. You do lose a little bit of space there. 106 on the wheelbase, just under 106 inches. And we're sitting on 20 inch wheels here. Uh, these are the optional wheels. It would normally come on 18s. This one has the 20s. So if you really want the best ride quality possible, then you're gonna to wanna to drop down into the 18s, get those standard wheels. But honestly, this thing rides so well, even on these 20s. And I do really like the design of these wheels. Those are gonna be wrapped in all seasons. These are run flats. You're not gonna get a spare. I love the silver trim all around. And we've got the roof rails going on. These door handles here, I like how they did the black just to sort of set things off a little bit. These will actually light up at night as well and do have touch to lock and touch to unlock on the inside. And you'll notice that we do have power folding mirrors as well. We'll have more of this silver through here. We got the LED integrated turn signals. These are heated, as I mentioned, power folding as well. And we've got the, the camera down here since this one does have that full 360 view. Another note about these doors is the door handle doesn't actually pull away when you grab it. It actually is just a little button on the inside here. Very low impact. That's sort of a theme with this car. Just very low impact. A lot of the inputs here are very easy. It does take a little bit of getting used to just because it's strange. It's not sort of your typical way to open a door, but it is actually very, a very nice feature. Up in the front here, this thing's probably not winning any beauty contest anytime soon with this big massive grill that just keeps getting bigger and bigger. I do like the contrast with the sort of dark chrome and the black and the white through the headlights really does look nice. I like those features to it. It's just really the grill I think could use a little bit of work here, but at least it is functional. There is all of this openness. It's all open actual venting other than a little bit across here. You have the parking sensors going across and we've got the camera since this one does have that full 360 camera. The lights over here, typically you're going to get the by LEDs with the auto high beams and the LED daytime running lights as well. This one has the triple LEDs option and the nighttime visibility is excellent. It's very, very good. The other thing you get when you get those triple LEDs is you get the adaptive lights, the cornering lights. So actually when you turn the steering wheel, the lights will actually shine wherever you have the wheels pointed. That is a very nice premium feature to have. Excellent headlights. Love the way they did that. I would definitely highly recommend those. 
back end here. I love the orange when the sun hits it just right. It looks really nice. It's got that sort of metallic flake in it. But we've got LED tail lights. We got, I love the way they did the brake lights through here with the red and the black and the white. It looks really nice. And against this orange, really a nice looking back end here. We've got the Lexus logo spread out. They switched that in 2022. We have the parking sensors going on down here. We've got the hidden exhaust. We've got a backup camera right there and this one has the kick to open option to it you do have the option the power lift gate which i thought was a little bit strange um but this one has power lift gate with kick which is a nice thing to see on a luxury vehicle here and that'll open up into just about 22 cubic feet of space i'll get you what those real measurements actually translate to and we've got your buttons over here for dropping down the seat since this one has the 60-40 split on it. Those power seats, the power drop down of the seats is an option that is not standard. Since we're on run flats, we don't have a spare, unfortunately. But the first aid kit, we've got a little bit of extra storage and access to the battery over here, but unfortunately no spare going on. The space here is gonna be a little bit smaller than an RDX, as I mentioned, an RDX is a little bit on the longer side, so that gets you a little bit more space, but this still really feels like plenty of room. Interior-wise here, we have a really nice place to be. There are a couple of questionable decisions here, but for the most part, this is very well thought out. Uh, this also has the luxury package on it and a couple of a la carte options. So I'll put up the Monroni so you can see what the options are on this particular one. But it is super, super nice. Nice leather wrap steering wheel, heated because of the cold weather package. Not just heated, but if you turn on your heated steering wheel, then if you turn the car off and come back to it later or the next day, turn it back on, that heated steering wheel will still be on, which is a nice touch, not something that a lot of automakers are doing. And that goes for the heated and ventilated seats as well. Those settings will stay if you turn them on. Now those heated and ventilated seats are part of that luxury package. You can also get them in the premium package. These are 10 way power, four way power lumbar, eight way power for the passenger seat. These have the Chevron and the leather trim because we are in that luxury package. These are very comfortable seats. Uh, they really do the job well. They're bolstered just right, not too tight that they're eating into your kidneys, not too loose that you're bouncing around much. They got rid of the infotainment a couple of years ago in 2022 that had that touchpad that so many people complain about. And now for the steering wheel, we have these haptic touch things going on, these sliders all over. So I'm not really sure what the thinking was there. You know, Volkswagen is getting into a lot of trouble with that. And Mercedes has done that to their cars as well. It's just not a great thing to see. I don't like haptic stuff on the steering wheel. It's not the end of the world, but it is just kind of annoying. That heads up display that I mentioned has three different modes. There's like a simplified, a standard and a full on mode. And even in the full mode, it gives you a lot of information, but it's not like it's not too much information. It's not too cluttered. This tells you what gear you're in, tells you what your driver's assist settings are set at, tells you your front and rear cross traffic alerts, your blind spot, your lane tracing, your traffic sign recognition, your current speed. It, it, it gives you a lot of good information. Uh, it's very clear, it's right in front of you. It's not too cluttered, which is definitely nice. But then like I mentioned, once you start rubbing on these, then it all sort of starts cycling through some of the menus. Gauge cluster here, not a whole lot of information, but just the right amount of information. This is all digital now. There's no like sliding tack or sliding center screen like Lexus used to use in a lot of their cars. They still have in some of their cars now. It is fully digital on this one. Your range, your coolant temperature, see whether you're regening the battery or whether power is going into the wheels. It's just kind of a cool sort of thing that I like to nerd out to. You know, well laid out, big, big screen, good spacing on everything so it's not too cluttered. We've got the giant infotainment screen. This one again, like I mentioned in 2022, they switched to this brand new system, the Halexis system. You know, this 14 inch screen is part of the luxury package. It's also part of the premium package. Otherwise it's a 9.8 and it is massive. 
um, but it's very it's 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 easy to use your menus just down the side all your settings you can get into your personalization settings you can get into your navigation your sound settings because this one does have the mark levinson you can tune all your sound in there that's the 17 speaker system part of the premium or the luxury package um, you've got all your safety settings your driver's assist settings you can watch the energy flow uh, just like you can watch it in here, you can check your all-wheel drive system, you your tire pressure, your vehicle alert, all your service history. You can check all kinds of stuff through here, as well as navigation, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, both wireless, standard. And one thing that I don't typically like is when automakers start pulling the HVAC stuff in to the the infotainment system because then you have to dig through the menu just to adjust your temperature settings and your heated seats and your steering wheel and all of that but with this one in particular with the nx they have all of that stuff sticky to the bottom of the screen so while i would rather just have physical buttons just because i feel like they're easier to use at least that stuff is always available and there's no like multiple clicks trying to get to trying to get through to change your different HVAC settings. And we still have knobs for your temperature for the dual climate. And there's also voice control on this. It has a two microphone system. So there's a microphone on the driver's side, there's a microphone on the passenger side. So if I want to tell the system to heat up my seat or to drop my temperature or whatever I wanted to do, it will know that the driver is asking or that the passenger is asking. And above that, we've got the optional radar detector. We have the digital mirror here. I love that automakers are starting to put these in more and more, seeing more, more of these. Um, GM, I think, really led the way with this, but it's starting to pop up in Mazda, in Lexus, all over the place. And what this will do is it'll give you a completely unobstructed view of the back via camera out the back. And it's great at night too, because it has like a night mode. So you can see a little bit better at night than you would normally just in your regular mirrors. A nice big pano sunroof. Um, there's a smaller sunroof as well, but you, this one has the giant pano. So even the back uh, will get plenty of light going in there. Your driving modes are down here instead of up on a stock up here like like lexus has done in a lot of their vehicles much easier to get to again everything here is just well thought out everything's very easy to get to now this one has the wireless charging pad option which also gives you the digital key which means that you can get in and out of the car and start up the car with your phone rather than needing a key but we do have usb a usb c this wireless charger so one thing about this a lot of times wireless chargers are sort of they feel like an afterthought and you put your phone on it and it doesn't work very well and the phone will slide all around this one it's, it has its own little tray so the phone won't ever slide off of the charger entirely. And if you want, you can even tuck the charger away. So again, just another example of how this interior was just very well thought out. The gear shift down here is one of these ones that sort of pops back into place. Everyone's doing their own thing here, but it's very low impact, which is nice. And as you see, when I pop into reverse, then the mirrors will tilt as well. Your auto hold, your electronic parking brake, you have a full EV mode for when you're going low speeds, like in a parking garage or something. Your traction control, you got a little bit more space down in here. Next to the leather wrap here, you got this big swath of gloss black. And these buttons that I just mentioned down here are all kind of cheap, plasticky feeling. I hate when automakers use this gloss black stuff and I complain about it all the time. It's just, you look at it and it's got fingerprints and dust on it just from looking at it and it's just like if you're like you're buying a lexus for luxury you don't want it to feel like they ran out of money and tried to sort of patch something in it's just this sort of like lipstick on a pig thing going on it's still just cheap plastic that gets dirty really quickly and i just it's frustrating to see in a lexus especially when so many of the other things are so well thought out such nice materials the only other spot is here we've got some hard plastics right next to this nice wood grain uh the wood grain is part of that luxury package but the wood grain just leads into hard plastic not really my favorite but everything else leather leather nice touch here nice big screen integrated well leather here the back seats uh, those are power folding and heated because this does have that option on it. it typically would not be um, but the heated seats are down here down below in this uh, more gloss black down here 
uh, with the gloss black vents and the gloss black buttons for adjusting heated seats. And they've got USBs back there as well, 36 inches of legroom, which seems like actually it would be a decent amount, but it feels a little bit tight back there. If you had told me it was 36 inches, you know, I was surprised looking it up that this, that was actually 36 inches because it does feel a little bit tight back there. They do have the center armrest with the cup holders. Um, and they've got the funky door handles back there as well. The funky door handles up here, where it's just a push of a button. That does take a little bit of getting used to there, that the where it's just it's just a push um, rather than an actual handle. But again, it's another one of those sort of low impact things that just once you get used to it, it's actually really, really nice. Very nicely laid out, laid out interior, um, nice features. You definitely want to go for the Mark Levinson if you're on an audiophile. The seats are very comfortable. The steering wheel is very comfortable. I love that the settings are sticky. Uh, oh, and another thing about these settings, actually, if you set up your driver profile on, and pair it to your phone, you can get out of this car and get into another car with the hey Lexus system and just pull your profile into that car so if you're going on a trip you're renting a car happens to be a lexus with this new system in it you just pair your phone to it and it will pull up all your settings you don't have to reset everything so yeah just said generally speaking very very well thought out interior very nicely done other than those sort of couple of things with the gloss black and the sort of haptic stuff going on here So the first thing that I noticed driving this car around is just the ride quality. Lexus does ride quality so well, it's so smooth, and that is no different here. Even though we are a little bit lifted, even though we're on these big 20-inch wheels, it still rides super smoothly. Definitely a ride of luxury, luxury level ride quality. Aside from that, you know, the steering, I love the big beefy steering wheel. It's nice and comfortable. It's easy to steer, whether you're in eco mode or sport mode. It will get a little bit heavier in sport mode, but it's still nice and easy. Uh, the power delivery is fine. You know, it's 240 horsepower, which is not like a powerhouse, but it's plenty to get it out of its own way. Uh, the CVT does get a little bit droney if you do need to move quickly, you know, especially on the highway. Actually, the noise on the highway in general, it, it's a little bit louder than I expected it to be. It's still perfectly livable, but I expected, you know, with the luxury badge, it to be a little bit quieter. Um, but that CVT, when you put your foot into it, you try to accelerate a little bit more quickly, it does get a little bit droney. Those are really my only two sort of really complaints about the driving. But the priority here is definitely that smooth and comfortable ride. When I get down to low speeds, the brakes feel a little bit over assisted. It's not all the time, like 95% of the time it's fine. There have been a couple of times when I was around town, it was at low speeds and I kind of hit the brakes a little bit and it, it felt more like I was mashing the brakes even though I wasn't really giving it all that much. But outside of that, it's been very smooth, very comfortable, and that's not happening all the time, as I mentioned. The big thing here is the Lexus 3.0 safety systems. You know, the, the safety and driver's assist systems here are, rare, are very good. They're very helpful. Most of the time they stay out of your way, but when you need them, they do a great job. It has the lane departure warning where it'll just give you a little bit of a vibration in the steering wheel and it'll give you an indication in the heads up display. It has the safe exit warning where if you, you're parked and you're about to get out of the car and somebody's coming by, it will give you a warning. It's pedestrian monitoring so you don't hit a pedestrian uh, as well as the cyclist monitoring as well as collision avoidance, rear cross traffic alert, blind spot monitoring. But the story here is that the driver's assist features and the safety systems are extensive and they're very well done. The big one here that you're gonna use all the time, it really, if you're on the highway at all, is the adaptive cruise with the lane tracing. And here, the lane tracing and the 3.0 system is head and shoulders above the lane tracing in the 2.5. That's what's gonna keep you centered in your lane. 
than the radar cruise or the adaptive cruise. It's going to keep you a, a respectable distance behind the person in front of you without having to keep adjusting your speed. Uh, it is definitely a big, big plus. And this is not a hands-free system. It will yell at you if you have your hands off the steering wheel. It'll give you a big warning in the middle in red to tell you to put your hands back on the steering wheel. Now that heads-up display I mentioned, it has your current speed. It has the, the speed limit. It will tell you, it will give you the tra traffic sign recognition as well as stop signs over here. It'll tell you if you're in a school zone. It, it, all of that is standard as well. It'll tell you, like I mentioned, which lane you're going out of if you are going out of a lane. The other thing this one does have an option is the park assist. I did try that out this morning. It works very well, but it works very slowly. Like it will get you into the space, but it will do sort of some micro adjustments before getting you into the space when it's just lining you up to the space. And it's just a very slow system. So if there are a lot of people around you, it, it's gonna take a little while. They might get a little bit frustrated waiting, but that will help you whether you're parking next to people in standard spots and it will help you in parallel parking situations as well. At the end of the day, we have a car that really wears the Lexus badge well and is well worth the sub $60,000 price tag. This thing rides so nicely. It rides like a Lexus. Such great driver's assist features. The interior is very well thought out and it is super efficient. The only real qualms are gonna be with that gloss black on the interior, as well as some of the touchiness with the brakes. But overall, it's just such a nice vehicle and $60,000 doesn't get you as much as it used to. But in this case, it really does get you quite a bit. As always, thanks for watching and make sure to hit all the buttons down below. I hate to say it every video, but it really does help me out. Leave a comment if there's something that I missed and hopefully I will see you next time.